Good evening, everybody. Steve Rakin here with the Rakin Profit YouTube channel, coming to you guys with another live show. Wanted to thank everybody who is in the chat room right chat room right now. I'm chit chatting with a few people, so want to say hello to uh, Bleeding Rhea Nation, Anthony Rodriguez. We got Michael Cook in the house, so thanks, guys, for uh, hanging out in the feed uh, prior to the show. But in today's in today's live show, we're going to be covering ballpoint pins that sell on eBay for ridiculous profits from thrift stores, garage sales, and also flea markets. I couldn't fit it into the title, though. YouTube wouldn't let me put in that many characters. But anyways, guys, we're going to be covering this topic because uh, this was probably about a week ago. Somebody asked me to cover this. We were doing a live show researching. I don't know what we were researching. It was like board games or something. And like we somehow stumbled on a, uh, a ballpoint pen that sold for some good money. And some people were saying you should do a whole show around that. So here we are. We're going to do a live show covering the best ballpoint pens that sell on eBay. So before we get into the show, I want to make sure that the sound is okay because we are live right now. So bear with me for one moment and let me do a little sound test on my other computer. To the show, I want to make sure that this. All right, the sound appears to be working properly. Also, we have Brian Huntsman in the comment section. What's going on, Brian? Good to see you. TC Aquariums, what's going on? Thanks for hanging out on a Saturday evening with me. Paco the Dawn, Robert Benares, what's going on, Robert? Man, it was it was really cool uh, hanging out with you in Austin, man. We definitely got to connect again. Really cool guy right there, Alex Campos. Hello from California. What's going on, Alex? The Amazon FBA slash eBay treasure hunter. Hope for another great show. Tonight's going to be definitely a great show because we're going to be covering the best ballpoint pins that sell on eBay. And I can't say it enough. If you want to grow your business, you've got to learn more. It's all about education. Really, there's only one difference between, well, there's a couple main differences, but like one big difference between someone who's doing okay and making a little bit of money versus someone who's just killing it is knowledge. It really is. If you know more in this game, you're going to have that upper hand. Of course, you know, taking action and being consistent and networking and having people that are there for you to hold you accountable, super important as well. But the more you know, the better chance you have of succeeding. And also the more you know, the better chance you have of being able to utilize your time uh, effectively. And what I mean by that is the more you know, the better chance you have of going into a thrift store, a garage sale, attending a flea market and actually walking out with something profitable, right? So let's jump into this subject right now. Uh, again, guys, I'm going to be in and out of the comments. I've got my iMac uh, on the right-hand side of me. I know you can't see that, but I have the comments coming up right next to me. So uh, I will be jumping in and we're going to be covering this topic. Uh, to be 100% honest and transparent with you, I think I've only sold a couple of pins over the three and a half years that I've been a reseller. So I know very little about ballpoint pens. So um, I'm really excited to, to cover this topic, not only to you know entertain you guys and, and help you to learn as well, but to help uh, myself to learn as well, because I know I've passed on pens, especially at garage sales. And I guarantee you that I've lost out on a lot of money. So let's go uh, through the sold listings. We're on ebay.com right now. Uh, I went in and I typed in pens and then I went under the uh, subcategory pens and writing instruments, and then went down to ballpoint pens. So we're in the ballpoint pen category on eBay. If you looked on the left-hand side, you're going to see that the condition is used. The reason why I have that, that box checked off is because most of the time when you go to a garage sale, a thrift store, or a flea market, you're probably going to find these used. For price, I put in 37 and above. I just chose a random number that I thought would be appropriate. I don't want to just leave them empty because I don't want to be looking at pens that sell for five or 10 bucks. I want pens that are selling for a decent profit so there's enough margins in there. So I put in that price. Um, I'm going to put in buy it now as well just because that's just a, the formatted preference that, that I like most. Um, I'm going to also type in US only. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plug that in just so there's no confusion with currency. And then I hit sold. So it's going to sell all the ballpoint pens that I've sold on eBay recently that sold for 37 plus were used under the ballpoint pen category from the United States. So uh, let's dive right into it and start studying some of these items that have sold. So I'm going to open this up into another window. Looks like we have a, I'm going to read the title, uh, a scarce or scarce vintage 
Parker Classic Sterling Silver. I don't even know how to pronounce that. Sicily? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you guys, this is not going to be good in, in terms of my pronunciations, but here's a ballpoint pen. Take a look at that. It's spelled C I S E L E ballpoint pen sold for $99. And there's a few things I want you guys to be looking at. Um, Okay, never mind. It says this listing has been removed. Uh, but anyways, there's a few things I want you guys to be looking at when we go through this. I want you to obviously look at the titles. Because I want you to get acquainted with the actual brand. Also, I want you to see the keywords they're choosing. I want you to take a look at the pictures so you can see how they're displaying these items. So if they're selling for good profits and you see you know, a, a certain way that they're taking pictures, you can mimic that if you ever come across an item. Also, I want you to look at the descriptions as well and just study the overall listing. Um, so anyways, that was there was an issue with that listing. So we're going to get out of there. Uh, but I think the brand, I want to say that this is... I don't know if the brand is Parker Classic or if C-I-S-E-L-E. -E. I'm not sure if that's the brand or that's some type of terminology. One thing you're going to realize is when you start to research you know, products that you've never sold before, you don't know anything about, is it's going to be a little confusing because you're not going to understand fully the terminology or you know, the words that they use to describe uh, certain parts of the product or the brands. So uh, this is definitely going to be interesting live. Let's see what's going on in the comment section right now. I think scarce is another word for rare. Yeah, it is. You know me. I'm a little challenged when it comes to pronunciations and reading. Raken, you should come out with a book uh, of the pen types. I know I'd be willing to pay five to ten dollars a book of that. You don't need. There's no need to create a book. We're gonna we're gonna go through. It'll be 100% free for you right now. We're gonna go through all the sold listings. So, uh, here's a brand right here because I was doing a little research before this live show. This brand right here. I don't know if it's pronounced Mont Blanc. I want to say that's how you pronounce it. Uh, somebody please uh, correct me if I'm wrong. But this right here, M O N T B L A N C. You're gonna notice that throughout these sold listings, you're gonna see this probably 70 to 80 percent of the time. This one uh, brand right here just goes for ridiculous profits right here. So here's one right here. Um, I'm not gonna even try to pronounce these things because it's like you're, you're asking a dog to try to fly. I mean, it, it really is the equivalent of me trying to pronounce things properly. Uh, but I'm gonna just call it Mont Blanc Noblesse. $150 right here. $150 for this brand. And you should be able to see the uh, the little stamp right there. M-O-N-T-B-L-A-N-C. I'm curious if it's uh, embroidered or if it's stamped onto the actual pen. Uh, I'd assume it is. I don't see any pictures here. Uh, two of these stainless steel pens both have a pusher mechanism. One has the star on the clip and pusher mechanism and the other just on the pusher mechanism. Please see pick and pens. They are from different manufacturing date, but I am selling them together. So it looks like this is a lot of two. $150 right here. $150, which is uh, pretty impressive. All right, let's go back here. So here's a pen. Um, boy, oh boy, it's going to be a challenge to pronounce these. Monte Grappa, Symphony, Symphony Turquoise Blue, uh, celluloid sterling silver ballpoint pen rare. So let's open this up. Let's take a look at the way that they created their listing. Let's take a look at the, wow, I don't know why all these listings are getting removed. So I'm not sure if maybe certain brands are just restricted on eBay. This is the second time this has happened, uh, that the things are getting removed. So I'd be curious to hear what you folks have to say about it. Uh, Let's see, we got someone in the comments saying, I am an international student, was doing FBA and had to stop because of SSID taxes. Anyone hiring? I'm in social. <laughs> All right, let's see. Oh, I'm in SoCal. So someone was saying, I don't know if it's Sicily or C-I-S-E-L-E, -E, means chiseled and is a feature of the pen. So very cool right there. I appreciate that, Tim. C-I-S-E-L-E -E means chiseled so very cool learning something new so someone was saying probably all fakes garage flips was saying that so one thing i'm i'm definitely certain that we're gonna have to be on the lookout for are 
fakes. So I'm not sure how to authenticate these pens. Um, I'd highly recommend if you find one of these pens, you know, some of these high-end brands that we end up coming across to do your research. I know on eBay, there's a lot of guides in terms of how to authenticate items. For example, if you type in authenticate Ralph Lauren Polo or authenticate True Religion or authenticate Coach Purse or maybe even authenticate Tiffany and Company pen, there may be a guide that, that has been created that will kind of teach you what to look for. So definitely do your research. Uh, speaking of items that have sold, here's a Tiffany and Company vintage sterling silver quote quote unquote T clip ballpoint pen retired piece. So $180. Can you guys believe it? A pen actually sold for $180. Now I don't know why. I don't think I've ever used a pen that was more expensive than maybe five bucks. So maybe there's a difference. Uh, let me know in the comments section. Do you folks own a high-end ballpoint pen? If you do, is it worth it? What's the difference in your opinion with a, you know, maybe a 40 or a hundred dollar ballpoint pen versus, you know, a three or a five dollar one? Very curious. Um, in the item condition portion at the upper hand uh, part of this listing says pen is a vintage silver, uh, has some tarnish, but ink is full and there are a few dents or irreversible. So one thing I'm already curious about is what if what if you come across one of these high-end ballpoint pens and it's out of ink? How do you refill it? I, I'd be curious to know how that is exactly done and would it be worthwhile to refill it? Would a ballpoint pen that's out of ink have any value? I'm not sure. These are these are questions that I have already and uh, you know I'm definitely going to do some more research on it. But the brand is Tiffany and, and, and Co. Tif Tiffany and Company. Uh, $180 right here. Let's take a look at some of the pictures. Looks like a pretty cool design. So Garage Flip says, I've, I've never seen one of these at a garage sale. I would expect to see a ballpoint pen, something like this in the case at an estate sale maybe. So yeah, I think that's definitely a good place to go to look for these items. So uh, yeah, pretty interesting right there. Let me update my, okay. So yeah, $180 right here. Gorgeous Tiffany and Company Sterling Silver Ballpoint Pen with T-Clip. I don't know what that means. Hallmarked with Copyright Tiffany. So 0.295. So I already know right now from, from my days of dealing with uh, silver. Uh, 0.925 means it is uh, Sterling Silver, I believe. So if you want to be able to figure out if it's silver or not, definitely you know look for that 0.925. Let's see if we could find that on here. Um, I don't see it. So I could already tell that this has value just, just from the silver in it alone. So pretty cool right there. Let's keep looking at more items. Again, guys, uh, you know, this is going to be a work in progress, right? Uh, really the main point of this show is to open up your eyes to the opportunities out there. Will you ever come across one of these high-end ballpoint pens? Maybe you will. Uh, maybe you won't. But all it takes is one. You know, all it takes is one you know, time when you're at a state sale or a thrift store and you recognize it and the competition doesn't, and you know, you put a hundred dollars profit in your pocket. So, okay, let's keep going down. Vintage Pelican silver plated barley corn ballpoint pen with gold plate trim, hundred dollars. I mean, I can't believe that, uh, you know, that these pens are selling for that much money. It's, it's really impressive. Uh, so let's see, I don't know what, Silver plated, I know what that means, but barley corn ballpoint pen. I don't understand what that means. Let's take a look at the picture. You know, to me, this just looks like a normal pen. It really doesn't look like anything, you know, out of the ordinary. So you can see right there, uh, it's got that little ring going around it with the with the brand Pelican, P-E-L-I-K-A-N, right there. Let's take a look at some more pictures. Okay, so uh, I believe the T-clip is that is that gold clip right there that you could clip right onto onto your belt or onto your shirt. I'm ass I'm assuming that you put it on your shirt. Uh, let's see, made in West Germany. So it looks like the brand Pelican is made in West Germany. This elegant ballpoint pen is a genuine Pelican. There is an area with no pattern for you to monogram. Beautiful writing instrument and addition to your collection. 
Okay, twist cap ink actuated. So I don't know what that means. Sounds interesting. Cap and barrel, silver plated in the barley corn pattern. So I guess this is the, the barley corn pattern right there. Very interesting. $100, so pretty cool. Let's do a little research right now. Let's open up another tab. Let's go to eBay. Let's type in, um, let's type in Pelican ballpoint pen and i want to see if you know all of these pelican ballpoint pins are doing well or if there's different markets maybe there's lower end higher end as you guys know we've we've covered puzzles we've covered board games we've covered video games there's certain brands and certain styles and just certain factors that if you find it it could be worth a lot but not all of them are created equally so let's go sold and let's see. So right here, I already see a $9 one. So that tells me already that there's lower end Pelican ballpoint pens. Here's a $259 one, 48, 61, 200. So yeah, it looks like a lot of these are doing pretty well. Again, this is, I'm so new to this niche that I can't really distinguish what's making it worth more or less, but I can, I can say this right now from, you know, from doing books on Amazon to clothing on eBay, the more you study, the more you research, the more you look into it, you're going to be able to differentiate why, why something's worth a hundred versus 20. And it just takes practice. It just takes learning. So, uh, really the main thing I want you to get out of this live show is just opening up your eyes that. You know, there is an opportunity and to look, if you come across ballpoint pins, if you're at a garage sale, you see them, just look, you know, just look. I mean, half the battle is looking. Have you ever guys, have you guys ever gone to a garage sale and you see something and you're like, oh, I don't know anything about it and you just skip over it. And then maybe you see a live show like a month later and you're like, holy crap, like that might've been a jackpot, but you never looked, you know, it might've been a box of puzzles that were like really old looking and you never looked. And you're, you're wondering to yourself, like, was that puzzle that I saw on that live show in there? And you'll never know. So half the battle is just knowing that there's an opportunity there. So, um, yeah, it looks like this brand Pelican uh, is doing pretty well. Again, you're going to want to dive more into these brands and, and study up. Uh, but definitely a brand that I'd consider a, uh, a bolo to be on the lookout for. All right. So here again, this brand right here, Mont Blanc. I don't know if that's how it's pronounced, but this brand right here, based on my research, is probably the best one. If you're looking for a ballpoint pen that sells for over $100, there are so many of them that are selling. I mean, look at this, 325, 125, um 150. I mean, every time you go down, you see one. Speaking of interesting pens, look at this. I didn't know Gucci made pens. Watch this be restricted as well. I wonder if it's these listings keep getting restricted. No, it didn't. Uh, here's a Gucci pen. Is it real? Is it fake? I don't know. Uh, but check this out, guys. I didn't know Gucci made pens. Ballpoint pens. $99.99. This pen has some tarnishing from age, which is easy to polish out with the proper compound. The camera is in ultra high definition, so the tarnishing is magnified in the photos. Uh, 0.925 sterling silver. That's cool. I think I'd like to own a sterling silver pen. Maybe I will buy one after this show. Gucci. So here we have a brand I've ne never heard of before. Let's open this up in another tab. Superb. Uh, let's see. How do we pronounce this? Schaefer. Superb Schaefer Grande. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. Ballpoint pen. 23 karat gold plate. Holy moly. That looks clean. This is the type of pen you'll probably see in a presidential office right here, $149.99. I'm trying to figure out if this is the brand. I have a feeling I have a feeling that this is the brand right here. I'm going to copy that and do some more research. Superb, Schaefer Grande, not going to try to pronounce that. Let's see. Wow, so they're saying that this ballpoint pen that dates to approximately 1991. So this is about almost like 15 years old right here. So that's pretty cool. Let's do some more research. Let's type that in and let's go ballpoint pen to see if this is a one-off or a jackpot city item. So we're going to go to sold. 149, 249, 249. Holy moly. So again, guys, uh, be on the lookout for this pen. You know, in terms of, you know, the specifics, what to look for, factors, you know, what not to buy, I don't know. I really don't. This is like my first, like, I'm, I'm just jumping into the game with you guys right now. So I don't know 
specifically what to look for. You know, as as you know, the months go on and I do some more research, I'll be sure to come back to you guys. I'm I'm sure we'll have a whole series when it comes to pens because there's a lot of different pens out there, not just ballpoint pens. Um, but it looks like a lot of these are doing really well. Here's one that did that only sold for twenty nine ninety nine, but it may be a different brand. I'm not sure. Uh, let's jump into the comment section real quick and see what's going on and see if anyone could help me out with some of these questions that I've been having. So it looks like we have 54 people watching live. So I want to thank you all for watching on a Saturday night. So that's pretty cool. Hopefully this video is maybe just opening up your eyes or motivating you or maybe you're listing right now. Let me know in the comments section, are you listing on eBay or Craigslist or are you doing an FBA shipment? And uh, is this in the background just as some form of education? Let me know what you're doing right now. I'd be curious to know what you're doing on a Saturday night. Uh, but anyways, let me scroll up to the comments and see what's been uh, coming in. So Garage Flip says, I know other pens have cartridges that you can buy. So I mentioned earlier that what do you do like if a if a pen runs out of ink, do you fill it up? So it looks like there's cartridges that are out there. Uh, Canadian Flipper says, many of these pens you're looking at are valuable simply because they are made out of sterling silver or they are manufactured by a company such as Tiffany. So that's a really good comment right there. Thank you, Canadian Flipper. Let's see. Brian Huntsman says, I buy my pins at Dollar Tree. Very cool. Uh, Carl says, it's just a social status announcement. Owning a pen that costs $150 plus as compared to a $20 plus pen. So I made a comment earlier, you know, asking folks out there, what's the difference between a high-end ballpoint pen you know, versus a, you know, a $10 one. And uh, Carl was saying that it's mostly a social uh, status announcement. So uh, very interesting right there. Uh, Shamus McWright says, I got a fountain pen out of a dumpster worth $60. So what's the, what's the ROI on a free pen? Infinity? Uh, you're more, uh, Canadian Flipper says, you're much more likely to come across a vintage fountain pen than a valuable ballpoint pen. Fountain pens would probably be, be a better focus for a live stream like this. So we'll definitely be sure to do a, a show on that as well, Canadian Flipper. Again, um, I'm the farthest from an expert when it comes to buying and selling pens. So I had to start somewhere. So uh, I appreciate your feedback. Uh, Brand Chrysa123 says, do you write some of your off your meals on taxes when you take a sourcing trip? Yes, I do, but be sure to, um, you know, talk to your accountant or CPA because there are certain rules that you have to follow. Uh, for example, a lot of people think that, you know, if, you know, say you live in, you know, say you're in your local town, if you go out to eat lunch and you're sourcing, you can't write that off. You might think you can, but you can't, at least according to what I've heard from uh, my CPA. Let's see, 0.925 stands for 925 parts pure silver, 45 parts Copper, sterling silver is 92.5% pure silver, 7.5% copper, same alloy. I don't know about pens, silver I know. WMB coupon, thank you for that. I appreciate it. Uh, the Amazon FBA and eBay Treasure Hunter says, I think I will stick with vintage video games, LOL. About to go pick up a Pokemon Game Boy lot for 100 That's worth roughly four seventy five. So that's pretty cool. I actually just sold a uh, – I had a Pokemon – themed uh, Game Boy Color with a Pokemon Yellow uh, game that I, I bundled up and sold it for $139.99 the other day. So that was pretty cool. Pokemon, trending right now. Let's see. So uh, me, me gone, me, um, oh, maybe Megan Eddy, I don't know. Working on shipments. WMB says peeling stickers. Philip Murray says respect the pins. Respect it. Frank says, I am cleaning my basement and trying to create my quote unquote office so I can really start my reselling business. Yeah, it's definitely important to have, have a space dedicated to your reselling business. It'll help you to keep organized, but also it'll motivate you to, to keep, you know, listing and pushing forward because you have that space there. You know, it's, it feels like a real business, so it definitely helps. Uh, Shamus McWright is saying, picked veggies from the garden, planning my sourcing route for tomorrow, eating, watching this video for tips, and also watching Jungle Book. With the kiddo. Sounds good. Uh, all right. Let's continue going uh, through some of these items right here. I want to continue to educate not only you, but myself as well. Uh, here is another pen that sold for under $199. There was a best offer on it. Delta Julius Caesar Ster Sterling Silver Ballpoint Pen. So let's take a look at this listing real quick. 
All right. <laughs> Take a look at the picture, guys. Check it out. Wright's great explanation mark right here. Check that out. Wright's great. So that's a cool looking pen. Take a look at that picture, guys. That is a really, really cool looking pen. It looks like uh, there's a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of attention to detail on this pen. Looks like it's sterling silver. I could already see right off the bat. So I'm, I've already learned one big thing. I'm going to teach you guys one thing that I already learned. Share with you one thing I learned. Sterling silver pens are worth money. Obvious, but you know what? Now you know what to look for. Sterling silver uh, pens. So that's pretty cool right there. Uh, let's take a look at some of the details on this little puppy right here. Oh, check that out. It's like a little horse engraved in there. That's awesome. Up for sale is a very rare Delta pen. They only made 999 of these, and they are becoming increasingly harder to find. Perfect for any collector. Features sterling silver accents and a beautiful red marbled case. Uses Fisher refills. So I think that answers one of my questions right there. So I guess, you know, I was asking earlier, how do you refill uh, these pens? I guess they create cartridges, refill cartridges for them, I, I, I suppose, or maybe it's an ink that you pour in. I'm not sure. Let's uh, let's take that brand. Let's copy it. Let's go back into eBay. I think the brand is Delta, I want to say. So let's go to Delta Ballpoint Pens, and let's see if all these brands are doing well, or maybe only the ones that have like the marble or the or the you know sterling silver. Let's check out this brand right here. Let's go used. I don't want to be looking at new. Um, here's one, 185. There's the one we just looked at. Um, looks like this seller right here is selling a lot of pens because he's got that same great background. Uh, 174, 175, 59, 125, 99, 75, 50, 40, 59. So this is a brand to be on the lookout for. Um, this only went for 995. I'm curious why. So this is 0.925 sterling silver, supposedly based on the title, um, but only went for $9.95. I don't know if it was because of the color or if it maybe it ran out of ink. I mean, it's silver, so I know there's some value just in silver alone, even though, you know, I don't think silver is worth too much nowadays. What is it, like 15 an ounce? Italy, engraved in there. You should you see that right there, the 925? That's what you want to be looking out for to be able to uh, notice if uh, it's sterling silver. Uh, let's see. Brian Huntsman said, just got done working all day, garage sales, then crappy job. Let me know in the comments section as well, guys. And I apologize if you folks are watching like a couple days after this live show because you won't be able to see like the live feed. Um, but if you are watching live, let me know what did you find from the garage sales uh, this morning because today's Saturday. Let me know and I'll, I'll shout out some of your finds for the people who watch another day. Um, but yeah, this only went for $9.25, so I'm not entirely sure why. Uh, here's an inter... Interesting, <laughs> interesting Delta ballpoint pen. I'm just reading. I'm reading the description, uh, the title. Wow, check this one out right here. Delta Israel 60th edition. It's crazy, guys. 448 bucks or best offer. It's amazing what some people are willing to pay. I mean, look at the detail on this. This is a beauty. Wow, holy mackerel. That is one good looking pen right there. Um, my birthday's at the end of May. So, you know, for my, I'm, I'm 29. So for my 30th birthday, if you want to be an awesome subscriber, just buy this, just buy it, send it over to me. I'm just kidding. Uh, but that's really cool. No, I, I don't need anything that high end. That's, that's crazy right there. Um, but check that out. Check out the attention to detail. Delta Israel 60th edition, uh, anniversary silver limited edition ballpoint pen, the blue barrel colors, uh, recreate Israel flag only 1,948 pieces made. So that's cool. That's a, that's a great looking pen right there. That is really cool. So as you guys can see this, this Delta brand does well. Uh, you want to look for another thing that I'm learning is you want to look for, once you find the brand, you want to look for the, you know, for the attention, you want to look for the details, like these little rings with these little designs, like, just look how cool that it just looks cool. I, I don't know how to describe it, but it looks cool. Look at the color. I mean, it's a nice looking pen. Somebody literally bid this up to $96. Can you believe it? Somebody literally 96 bucks. It's crazy. Uh, Valerie says, Great information, Steve. Something else cool to be on the lookout for at estate sales. Exactly. So, uh, again, guys, you know, I don't want you coming on to this live show saying, Oh, Steve's a ballpoint pen expert. Not, I, 
I, I, I don't know anything about them. I'm learning with you guys right now. So, um, you know, if you guys have any tips for the people who are watching live in the comment section, you know, drop a line, drop a comment, help me out with pronunciations. We're here to help one another. Um, you know, I was at a thrift store today. Actually, I was at a thrift store yesterday, Savers, and uh, I was just going and looking for a few pieces of clothing for myself. I ran through the books real quick, um, but I wasn't really going to source. And I'm going to walk out, and there's this guy there who literally the carriage is full of uh, books. He must have had 100 books. And I walk by him, and he looks at me, and I look at him, and he's like, Steve? And I'm like, yes. He's like, are you on YouTube? And I'm like, Hey, what's up, man? We started talking. We started helping each other out, giving each other tips and stuff. But you want to know what? We've got to be here to help one another out. We don't have to be each other's enemy. I mean, we are, you know, competition to an extent, but there's so much out there. So, you know, if you're in the comment section, feel free to help other people out as well. Uh, let's work as a team. Let's see what other items that we can come across. Here's that Tiffany and company brand again, which tends to do pretty well. Uh, 71 89 65 best offer under 70 there's that brand again the 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 Mont brand 172 99 okay here's a brand that I haven't come across yet quorum Corum, not sure uh, carbon or watch carbon fiber ballpoint pen holy mackerel I didn't know they came out I didn't know they had carbon fiber pens that's pretty crazy um, let's see, what can we learn about this item? Looks interesting. Looks like it's about five and a half inches in length. Karum watch carbon fiber retractable ballpoint pen engraved. So that's cool. It's got a nice, uh, it's engraved. It's got the name. It's got a nice design. Pretty cool right there. Let's, uh, let's go a step further. I don't know if I'm going to, I'm going to just guess that this is the brand. Let's go, let's type that in and uh, go to ballpoint pens. Let's see if this is the brand. So here's one for sale for 185. Let's go to sold. So here's one that sold for 59.99. We just looked at best offer under 65, best offer under 150, best offer accepted under 79, 61. Yeah, definitely an item to be on the lookout for. It looks like they're all the same design. But uh, yeah, if you ever come across this pen right here, guys, uh, not sure if you ever will, but this this definitely looks like it's doing uh, pretty well. So, I mean, imagine walking into you know a garage sale. I always say these. I always give you guys these funny little examples. But imagine walking into a thrift store and and finding this for like a quarter or a dollar. Will you ever? Who knows? But I mean, imagine it. Just imagine you walk in. It's a dollar. You pick it up. You throw it on eBay. You sell it for sixty bucks. I mean, what's it going to cost to ship? Two bucks. You might even be able to put it in an envelope, but you probably want to protect it. You know, let's just say it costs you five bucks to ship. You put it in a box. You want to really protect it. Uh, fees on sixty dollars, a sixty dollars sale with PayPal and eBay will be about I don't know seven dollars. So let's say you're in it for five for shipping, seven dollars with fees. So you're in it for twelve. Your cost of goods is a dollar. So in total, you're in it for thirteen bucks. You sell it for sixty. You just made what forty seven dollars profit. On a one dollar investment, I mean, these are the types of things that can happen. Will it happen for you? Probably not. There's a good chance you'll never find this item. But what if you do? That's all I'm saying. If you find it, you're gonna make some money. All right, let's see what's going on in the comment section. Seventy three people watching live. That's cool. There's a lot of. You know what I've noticed about this community that we're a part of? People are getting serious. People are getting serious with their education and their learning. And you guys are getting so smart. You really are. I mean, I interact with a lot of you folks in the green room. I interact with a lot of you folks just in the YouTube comments. And uh, it's just amazing how far we've all come over the last, you know, two or three years. I remember when I came into this community, you know, three, three and a half years ago, you know, there was a lot of noobs, a lot of beginners. And there's nothing, you know, there's, you know, everyone's going to be a beginner at one point or another. But it's crazy. You guys are just, you guys are killing it. You're very smart. And, uh, you know, a lot of dedicated people in the comment section. Uh, we got Swamp Picker in the house who I actually met in Austin, Texas. Super educated. Great guy. Uh, Kinetic Energy. Is Yong here? No. Uh, Yong, he's in California. Uh, I don't know what Yong's up to right now. He's probably causing trouble. Uh, what's up, David? Good to see you. Green Pastures 1000. Good to see you in the house. Uh, Brian Huntsman, who is a Green Room member. What's going on, Brian? 
Sealed Disney trivia game uh, going for 70 paid 250 That's cool. That's a great garage sale find. Today, uh, I didn't go out to mini garage sales, but I found uh, I found a brand new in the box uh, board game. I don't, I don't remember off the top what what the uh, the name was, but I paid two bucks, selling for like 47 Picked up three books. Each were going for over 20 I paid a couple bucks each for those. One was going for 110 um, I don't remember, but got a bunch of stuff. Anyways, let's continue with this uh, live show. So definitely be on the lookout for that brand right there. C O R U M. Look for that model. Carbon fiber ballpoint pen. Here's this brand again, thirty nine ninety five. Actually, this looks like just a uh, a ten can pen set box. So this doesn't even include the pen. Went for thirty nine ninety five. Uh, Tiffany Sterling. We already know about that. Here's a new brand right here. S T du Dupont. We're gonna just call it that in my little world. 250 bucks, wow. What is going on with this? So I think I see Paris, so it looks like we've got a, a Paris item. $250, pretty cool. I don't know what that says, Andy something. Uh, Andy War Warhol, Elvis Presley ballpoint pen. So again, guys, I don't know what's going on with this right now. Um, but let's type in, let's take this brand right here. This is what I like to do. I like to take the brand and I like to paste it in and then hit ballpoint pen just to learn a little more about it because you can't just take, you know, a brand that does well one time and say, oh, buy everything in that brand because there's so many factors. Um, okay, so let's hit the sold listings and see what pops up here. Wow, so this sold for $450 right there. Absolutely crazy. $185, best offer. $199, $67. Whoa, hello. Someone get me some Jello. $1,195. Now, this is new. This is new. I, I want to say that. This pin right here sold for $1,195. This has got to be made out of gold. Let's see. I don't know what is making this thing so valuable, but this is crazy. Wow. Would you guys ever pay $1,000 for a pen? Let's see. I'd hate to be a salesman for a pen. How do you sell somebody a $1,000 pen? I don't know. Anyways, looks like this brand is doing very, very well. Um, okay, cool. So here's the uh, – this is what it looks like for the, uh, for the refills. If anyone's curious about how to refill – uh, your pen. It looks like this is the little thing. It looks like a little cartridge you stick in or something like that. Pretty cool. Anyways, uh, ST DuPont seems to be doing very, very well. I mean, these are all going for $50 plus. I mean, look at this puppy right here. $939? What in the world is happening? Jay says, hey, watched your video about starting on YouTube about a week ago. Made about 200 bucks selling some old magic, the gathering cards so far. So Jay, congratulations, man. That's cool. You know, the keys to get started, uh, you know, just get started, you know, selling items and, you know, keep learning, you know, learn about board games, puzzles, video games, books, clothing, you know, hats, uh, vintage toys. There's so many items out there. So congratulations. Uh, Shamas says, keep an eye out for black lotuses. So Green Pastures is saying Andy Warhol is a famous modern artist. So that's good to know right there. I don't know what I'd do without you guys. Uh, Mr. McWright is saying, keep an eye out, Mr. or Mrs., keep an eye out on those random trends on eBay. They can make you a lot of money, and a week later, they can sell for nearly nothing. I agree with you 100%. Kinetic Energy, based on you and Chris messing with Yong about views in your video. <laughs> you saw that video. That was really funny. Uh, David... McNeil says, I got my first sale on Amazon today. So everyone congratulate David. I know you guys out there who are selling on Amazon, I know you remember your first sale. It was a milestone. It was an epic day. I still remember mine. Um, yeah, I mean, your first sale is so important. Med for you one, I'm not that smart. I'm not either. You don't have to be smart in this business. You know, you don't have to be the most talented, the smartest, the brightest, the quickest, the fastest, the most talented in this reselling business. What you need to be is committed. You got to be committed to learning, committed to being consistent, 
committed to taking action. You don't have to be the smartest. You know, the sad thing is, and I know a lot of the, the old timers who are watching now who are, you know, who've been in this business for 10, 20 years, they kind of hate on the folks like, uh, you know, myself and the newer people have been doing it over the last five years because you don't necessarily have to be the brightest or the smartest. You just need a smartphone. You just got to look it up on eBay, scan it with your barcode, with your Amazon seller app. I mean, technology can do a lot of work. Obviously, you need some common sense, right? And, you know, I'm, I'm oversimplifying the whole thing uh, in general. But, uh, you know, if you have a smartphone, you don't necessarily have to be an expert in ballpoint pens or in puzzles or board games or clothing. Just look it up. That's the number one thing I could say. If you're not sure if you should buy an item, just look it up, right? Just look it up on your eBay app or your Amazon seller app and just see, you know, what are they selling for? What's the rank? How often are they selling? Find one that's sold that's comparable, you know? So, you know, if you're looking, you know, at a specific pen, uh, to purchase, find the same one that is sold if you can. And that's going to give you an idea of, you know, the value. So, um, you know, dead serious. You don't have to be the smartest. Uh, what happened to your vending machine business? I enjoyed it while it lasted. was really considering it for my own business. I can't tell you guys how many times I get that question. Um, but to answer that, I decided not to go forward with that business. Just, you know, the time it was going to take and, um, it just it really the time the time was the biggest factor and I just never I never really dove into it and I just decided it wasn't for me so but I gave it a shot uh, we dig history I'll second Jay's comment just started a few weeks ago watching your vids made two hundred fifty dollars so far a couple Robert Graham shirts and some time in Bahamas and a few other things we dig history congratulations that's awesome um, you know I can't tell you how many people I meet who. They watch the videos, they listen to podcasts, blog posts, um, TV shows, whatever, right? They, they get knowledge, but they never take any action. So I'm clapping for you. I commend you for taking action and, you know, listing your items up and selling it. That's the start. That's the start. And uh, anybody can do this business. Doesn't take, you know, a special person. Doesn't, doesn't, you don't have to be a man or a woman or you don't have to be young. It doesn't matter if you're old or young, whatever, you know. Anyone could do this business. I see 15-year-olds killing it. Um, we've got a few uh, members in the green room, which is a private uh, website that I run with three other guys, which kind of, you know, it's a, it's a whole community based around reselling. You get more attention. We have Bolo videos, all this information, private shows. Uh, you could check that out at greenroomuniversity.com. But we have two members in there, uh, Carol and Les. And I want to say that they're in their 70s or 80s. Uh, and successful resellers, you know, selling on eBay and Amazon. So it doesn't matter your age. There's 15 year olds, there's 70, 80 year olds, there's men, women, kids. Doesn't matter. Anybody can do this business. Uh, anyways, let's continue going down the line. Here's uh, this is something different. I'm not going to look into that, but it looked like something interesting. Levenger, 140 bucks. Uh, Visconti. We're, we're going to start to just kind of roll through them instead of diving into them. Visconti. Opera pen, 149, best offer accepted. Uh, rare Lamy ballpoint pen. See, that looks interesting. I, I I can't resist. I have to open it up because it looks, to be honest, it kind of looks stupid. Um, 59.99. Why? Why is that going for 59.99? I I have to look into this. Um, let's let's type that in. Why is that going for so much money? Let's type used. Hey, guys, 73 people in the house, 77. Smash that like button, guys. Show some love. I tell you right now, for content creators, the one thing you can do to make them the happiest, it isn't buying their stuff or whatever, you know, liking them on Facebook. That doesn't matter. Hit the like button on YouTube. Show some love right now. I'm telling you right now, it really motivates us to keep making more videos. So I really would appreciate it if you hit that like button on the YouTube like the like button right under the watching now. Smash it. Anyways, 6265 Lamy Fountain and Ballpoint Pen set in the original box. Here's the one we just saw. Here's two of them that only went for $17.95. They don't look as sexy as these. $19.90, What in the world is going on right here? I don't know, guys. It's crazy. 
some of these items are just going for ridiculous amounts of money. Let's see something that would point at why it's going for this much money. This is a beautiful Lamy Titanium ballpoint pen. So maybe it's the titanium. Very hard to find. There are not any dents or brooking parts. I think they meant to say broken. One tip right here, guys. When you're creating your listing, make it so people could read. Make it professional. Um, I'm going to read this the way it sounds. There is no, there is no any dents or brooking parts on this pen. Tay Refill is still working. Unique design. So maybe this is a foreigner or something. I know. I'm, I'm just joking around. But seriously, um, you know, try your best to make it look as professional as possible. But three bids, 175. It's crazy. It's crazy the amount of money that's going on for these uh, pens right here. So I definitely say look into this brand right here. It doesn't look like anything super sexy, um, but you know, twenty even twenty six bucks, right? Even a fifteen dollar pen, you pick it up for a quarter. There's money to be made. Those add up at the end of the day. You know, it depends on your business model. You know, some people are looking for that fast nickel, slow dime. Um, some people want to you know flip it quick, make a couple bucks. Others are willing to wait for that. $100 profit. It's going to depend on your business model. But for me, I've always liked to sprinkle in some of the uh, the fast nickel quick flips for five, 10 bucks. Because at the end of the day, at the end of the month, that's what I meant to say. At the end of the month, you know, if you've got 40 or 50 little quick flips for $5 profit, you know, that's a nice little car payment right there. Right there. Or, you know, if you have a couple hundred of them, you know, that could be a, a you know, rent for your apartment. So, you know, don't underestimate the value of the quick flips for a couple bucks as well. Um, in a pen, you know, it's going to be easy to ship, easy to store. I'd assume that the return rates would probably be a lot lower compared to like electronic item or a clothing item. So, you know, even if you can get a pen and flip a little lamey for, for $19.99, why not? You know, why not? Uh, let's see. Let's find one more item, guys, and uh, then we're going to uh, jump into the comments and just do a little bit of Q&A. Let's see. So here's something. A vintage Parker 75 sterling silver 0 0.9 millimeter mechanical pencil. So this is interesting right here. I think I've seen this brand before looking through the sold listings. I want to say the brand is Parker. It's got a cool little design to it. Parker 75. So I don't know if Parker 75 is the brand or if it's just Parker. Apologize, guys. Uh, it looks like the brand is Parker. I don't know what the 75 stands for. Is it 75% sterling silver? I thought sterling silver was always 0.925. Anyways, uh, mark on pencil, Parker sterling cap and barrel USA. No scratch dings and dents on pencil. Looks like new. No mechanical problem. Twist to work. Excellent. Please look at all picks for pencil and box condition. Thanks for... Looking, so it looks like there's a question at the bottom. Question was, hello, for Parker 75 pencil number 26250918. With us importing shipping charges, I wanted to know to ship it to London, UK. Are there any charges from UK? Thanks, Tony. This pencil listed with Global Shipping Program asked eBay how much they charge. So that's a good question right there. Um, I know if, if, if buyers purchase from different countries, there's typically going to be custom charges. Uh, uh, international charges from going over the border and stuff like that. So uh, that's a good question. If you're, if you're using the global shipping program, which is kind of like the middleman, for example, typically before the global shipping program existed, you know, say you sold something to Taiwan, you'd ship directly to ta Taiwan. Now with the global shipping program, what you're doing essentially is you're shipping to eBay. Um, I believe it's in like Illinois. So you're shipping to their warehouse, which is referred to as this whole act is referred to as the global shipping program. So what you're doing is you're shipping to them and once it hits them, you're done. You know, your hands are wiped clean of the, of the delivery to the customer and then they take care of it. You know, they fill out the custom forms and, um, is that what I'm trying to say? The customs forms? I think so. I don't know. Anyways, it's been a long day. Um, they fill out all the paperwork and all that stuff, and then you're not responsible for getting it there. You're responsible just to get it to the global shipping program, from my understanding. So um, if you have a question regarding the global shipping program, I'm not sure how you'd answer it. So they just asked, you know, they just said, you know, ask eBay. So anyways, guys, let's dive into the comments. Uh, hopefully this live show uh, up until this point was beneficial to you. If you have any tips or um, suggestions for another live show, maybe another type of item, or maybe something related to pens, be sure to drop a comment. Let me know if you like this show. Again, guys, um, 
be 100% honest, not only did I want to help you guys out, but I wanted to learn for myself because education is key. Learning is, you know, is, is the number one thing to make more money in this business. The more you know, the more you grow. So that's it right there in rhyme form. Um, but yeah, I had a lot of fun. Definitely learned about some of the top dogs when it comes to ballpoint pens. Uh, still have a lot to learn. I'm probably going to do another show on this maybe in a couple more weeks to just get more acquainted with the terminologies and uh, the different items out there, the brands, the models, you know, what makes it valuable, what doesn't. But anyways, let's dive into the comments section right now. It looks like we're down to 67 people. Still a good a good crowd on a Saturday night, so really happy with that. Again, if you are and have enjoyed this show up until this point, be sure to smash that like button, guys. We're only at 55. Let's hit 100. Let's hit 100 likes because I know some people are coming in. They're going out. Make sure to smash that like button right now. Show some love for raking profit and for ballpoint pins. So... Um, Frank Rizzo says, hey, Steve, I'm somewhat new to eBay and received an email regarding eBay Valet. What are your thoughts on that? So I've never used eBay Valet. Uh, for the folks out there who are curious what that is, it's a program eBay has where you ship in your items to them, and there are restrictions on the type of items that you can send in to them. Uh, just type in eBay Valet, and you can read a whole, you know, whole list of things they accept and they don't accept. Uh, but essentially what eBay valet is, is you ship in your items to them into eBay. They picture it. Uh, they take pictures, they create a description, they create a listing for you. And, uh, I believe when it sells, they ship it out to the customer and everything and you get a cut. Now, um, you know, obviously when you sell your item, you know, on your own and you photograph it and all that, you make everything minus about 12% fees from you know eBay and PayPal fees. But with the eBay valet, I think based on what it sells for, I think you get like anywhere between a 50 or a 40 to a 70% cut based on the um, on how much it sells for. So I'm not 100% sure. I've never used it. I've heard a lot of bad things about it, to be honest with you. I've heard a lot of bad things about it uh, a couple of years ago, but I haven't looked into it recently. So maybe they've made some changes and it's better. If you use eBay valet, let us know in the comment section. Do you like it? Is it worth it for you? Why do you use it? Uh, the good and the bad. Let us know. Swamp Picker says, can we ever give you items for show topics? Yeah, for sure. Let us let me know for sure if you want me to research a, uh, a specific item uh, and we can do it live. I'm here to learn. I'm here to help you guys out as much as possible. So definitely be sure to let me know. Uh, Suzanne Hutchinson. What's up, Susanna? Good to see you. Haven't seen you in a while, says uh, she's referring to the, the eBay Valet program. Uh, they sold nothing for me, and it was pretty nice stuff. So there you go. Frank Rizzo says, thanks, Steve. So it's somewhat similar to FBA on Amazon. Yes, it is. It's somewhat similar, um, but I think there's a lot more incentives for someone to purchase through FBA versus through eBay Valet. And to be honest, I don't think they're going to give as much love to your listing as you would. Um, but I may be wrong. I try not to judge a book by its cover. So, you know, I like to try things on my own before I, I make a statement like that. So, you know, if you're considering eBay Valet, just send in a few items and see how it works for you. That's my best advice. But if you guys have any questions, I'm in the comments section right now. I'm here to answer your questions. We have 68 people watching live. If you've got a question about Ballpoint pens, eBay, Amazon, YouTube, anything. Shoot me a question right now. I'm just going to be hanging out with you guys for a few more minutes, answering questions. Scott McFarland says vintage boom boxes would be a good topic. I'm actually going to write that down. That's an excellent show topic. So let me know, guys, any show topics you'd like me to cover. Uh, Scott just said vintage boom boxes. So I'm writing that down right there. Uh, med for you one says, can you donate unsold items and write them off? Yes, you can. You can donate them. Um, I would talk to your CPA or your accountant in terms of, you know, how to go about doing so, but you can definitely donate items and, and have them as, as write-offs for sure. Would love a video on how you analyze Amazon app after scanning an item to determine if you want to buy. So I believe I've covered this before, Philip, uh, type in rake and profit Amazon seller app. I believe I've covered this. Um, I know I've, I've covered it on uh, live shows as well. 
Um, but that's another idea as well. Analyzing deals on Amazon seller app. I'm just writing this down. Appreciate all your feedback, guys. I'm here to help as much as possible. Uh, twin uh, MTY Estrada says fountain pens sell for more than ballpoint pens. So there's another idea, fountain pens. Thank you so much. Definitely do a video on that. Nevada Picker 702 says, I had an item returned by a customer on Amazon, then it disappeared. So what happened, what may have happened is they returned it and then it was unfulfillable. So possibly this is what may have happened. Maybe you sold, let's just say you sold a, a brand new in the, uh, a brand new sealed Monopoly game, right? You sold it to the customer. Well, they may have returned it but they opened it up and now it's unfulfillable. It's not in the same condition. So Amazon might, might have yanked it out of your inventory. So you're definitely gonna wanna go into your inventory and check that out. Uh, I believe, is it, I'm gonna just call you K. K asks, uh, how many units do you sell on average? Uh, per day do you sell on average? It really, really depends. Um, you know, there's some days where I only sell a couple. There's some days where I, where I sell, you know, 10 or 12 uh, on Amazon. Uh, but typically on average, I would say probably somewhere um, somewhere between seven to 15 items a day on Amazon. Uh, you know, I'm not a huge Amazon seller. You know, my numbers, they vary based on how much effort I'm putting into it. But typically I'm somewhere between the four to $8,000 per month on average. Um, you know, I have hit around 10 grand before on Amazon FBA as well. But the one thing you have to remember with Amazon is the more you put in, the more you ship out, the more you list, the more you're going to make. So, uh, also I do a lot of higher end items as well. I do some retail arbitrage. I do a lot of pawn shop stuff. So it's a lot easier for me to hit those gross numbers, you know, dealing with electronics and higher end stuff from pawn shops, cameras. How often do you reprice it? Uh, reprice your inventory on Amazon FBA. I use a repricer. Uh, the repricer I use is uh, repriceit.com. I'll type that into the comments section right now. Uh, reprice it. I'm just going to type in .com because it won't let me uh, type the actual URL in there. Uh, but what a repricer is, it is a uh, software that will automatically reprice your items uh, based on the... Uh, the rules that you set for it. So for example, I use reprice it. I have, I think I have probably less than a thousand items in my inventory now because I haven't been shipping in a ton lately. Was in Austin, Texas for about 10 days and have, have been busy with other things. So my inventory is probably under a thousand. Uh, but for around a thousand items, reprice it is about $17 per month for me. And what it does is it reprices my items based on certain rules that I set for it within the software on the website. So my items get repriced four different times per day. Um, so that's pretty much an autopilot for me. Uh, but if you don't have a repricer, I would definitely go in at least every couple weeks and make sure your, uh, your items are repetitive. Um, let's see. WMB coupon says I sent a book in Amazon and forgot to put the suffocation warning on it. Can I have them fix it or should I ask for it to be sent back to me and fix it? Amazon has not contacted me yet. There's probably a good chance you're going to just get away with it. You know, I wouldn't recommend doing it often. Um, you could get it sent back to you, but honestly, I mean, let, let me know in the comments what you folks would do. I would probably just let it go through and see what happens. Um, especially if you don't have any warnings. But if you've been warned previously, uh, then I'd probably just pull it out of my inventory and have it sent back. Or you know what you might want to just do? Just contact uh, Amazon. Just go into your Amazon seller account under help. Um, contact them. Say, listen, I forgot to put a suffocation warning on one of the items. What, what should I do? And see what they say. Uh, but that looks like about it in terms of the uh, comments. So I want to thank everybody for watching live again if you are watching live and have enjoyed this live broadcast be sure to smash the like button looks like we got about 61 likes 61 people watching so i appreciate all the love and the support you guys are awesome uh you guys really motivate me and help me out a lot so i owe it to you to give back as much as possible so anything you need anything i could do to help you to add value to your life be sure to drop a comment you could find me on facebook rake and profit Snapchat rake and profit, Periscope rake and profit, Instagram rake and profit. I'm all over the map. That's what I'm all about. So I'm here to help. Let me know what I can do. Uh, but anyways, thanks for watching live. You guys have a spectacular weekend. 
If you guys ever come across a ballpoint pen and you make money on it, you know, definitely be sure to send me a message. Say, Steve, thank you. Or Steve, you know, I found a pen and I sold it for 50 bucks. Like, I want to know. So uh, with that being said, you guys rock. Keep it up. You guys are freaking impressing me. Every time I meet you guys in real life, because I meet a lot of you guys at thrift stores and garage sales and meetups, I'm like, holy mackerel, you guys are awesome. You guys are killing it. Um, so keep up the good work. Keep learning. Uh, until the next video, I'll see you then. And uh, keep on picking and making that money. And I'll talk to you soon.